Hello there guys, I'm Sarfancy and in this tutorial I will show you how to get real time of your computer to your game. So let me demonstrate it, right now it's play and it's showing it. If I use my computer, here is my real time, you can see it's similar to this, well pretty much same. And I also connected with simple quest system, so once you overlap this thing, it will set here time where you have to go to this next, thi next thing, let's call it cube, the otherwise it will be too late. So if I overlap it now, you can see I won, if I wait for a bit. 220 means I didn't make it, I can go there and it's too late. Alright, let's get to it. Luckily for us, Unreal already has a solution how to get time of your device in your project. So well, let me just show you how to use that. I will create for it new blueprint. So let's right click, create here blueprint class and just actor. And let's call it real time showcase. Now let's open that and we will start by putting here text. So let's put here like text render, horizontal alignment, let's switch to center. And we will make it much bigger. So let's set world size to about 50. Let's move it up there. It's just for demonstration. You don't have to. You don't really have to follow this. And now we will get to now because that's exactly what we are going to use. So if you put here now, you have here two functions. One uh, one is now, which will show you time on local computer, which is probably what you are going to use, or UTC now. And it will give us this return value. So what you will do is right click on it and split structure pin. And now we are getting somewhere interesting. It will tell you what year we have, month, day, hour, blah, blah, blah. Even a millisecond if you wanted to use it for something. So now let's set it to our text. We'll take that text render and put here set text. Make sure it's set text function and connect it after event. Let's start by just setting here our seconds and see what happens here. Let's click on selected viewport, play it. And right now it's 45. And if you look at my computer, it's exactly that. Congratulations guys, we already have it. To add more variables in one variable, we can use one useful node, which is called append. So let's take ours and put here append. And make sure that you deselect this context sensitive because you can't use it with uh, integer. But if you deselect it, it will let you actually use that. So now what I can do is to put two strings together or as many as I want. And I always want to have one integer and in between add some divider. So let's use this thing, connect minutes and seconds. And now connect it to your text. So now it will take hours, minutes and seconds, put them next to each other and in between of them use this wonderful symbol. All right, let's close that and see how it works. And it works pretty well, look at that. But I don't really like that uh, that four is only with one digit. So let's see if we can change it. And easiest way how to do that will be probably to convert it into text. So let's set it to to text. Okay. Uh, to text integer 64. Oh no, sorry, on the integers. So to text and integer. Now click on this and minimum integral digits let's set to two. So it will always show at least two digits. That should fix our problem and you should probably use it for all of these values. So you make sure that there is always at least two digits. Now if I click on play, look at that, we got 06. Very cool. Now let me also show you how to use it in your game. So let's take our real time showcase. And what we will do here is to add here some cube. And you don't really have to set its location, doesn't matter, we will do it in level. Scroll down here and we will switch collisions preset to overlap all because we will use it just as collision. So set it to overlap all and on component again overlap. Let's cast to our third, pe third person character, which is this one. What we want to do is save a number, save numbers that we have at that time. So we can copy now and we will have to save only hour and minute. So let's promote them to variable. I rename them a bit. So let's set it to hour target and minute target hour is fine we can leave it like that so connect hour in here but with minute we want to take our minute and set it to plus one so integer plus integer set it to plus one and connect in here and why we are doing that you will see in a moment because next thing we will do is to set it in another text let's duplicate this one Let's put it higher and change its color to red. And we will replicate this thing. So take all this and we will set our text to this. Let's say that we want our player to get there at that exact time. So simply set what this will do. It will take your time once your player overlaps this cube. 
adds one minute to it and just sets it for now. And now we can do with it whatever you want. Let's say that you will create another cube. Let's just duplicate this one and probably name it so you don't mix them up. So cube target and cube trigger, move cube target somewhere else. And I want to make sure that my player will overlap target before one minute before this will happen. So let's put it in here on component begin overlap again cast to third person character. You can again copy now and let's put here a branch and I want to make sure that my hour, my minute value, let's use just minute because I don't want to complicate it, but you can use also hour, blah, blah, blah is less than what we set uh, once you overlap that first one. So uh, let's put it just int and I want it to be less than the, our new minute target. Put in minute target. You should also, of course, add here that hour just to be sure that your player is not just waiting one more minute and make sure it's less, but we can ignore it for now. And if it's true, let's print, let's print here you won. And if it's false, it'll have to be like something like too light. So now for this, let's take take this up here and down here. And I want cube trigger somewhere in here and cube target somewhere there. And also don't forget like text render one in place of text render on that first overlap. All right, compile, let's see. I go over this, it set it to 15.17, which means that I have to overlap that collision before it will be 15.17. So let me do that. And if it does, it's U1, wonderful. And let me wait a bit to try to overlap it after that. All right, now it's 17, which means 17 by itself will be less because we don't have that equal sign. And if we overlap it, it's too light. So that's how you can use this system for creating quests with using a real time or basically any anything that you want in your game. It can work pretty well to add immersion or whatever you want to do with your game. Or if you are making up with Unreal Engine, you are crazy enough to do that, then this can be used of course as well. So that's about it. I hope that you learned something. Project files for this tutorial will be on my Patreon and huge thank you everyone who already is on Patreon. Your help means uh, quite a lot to me. Sir Fancy out.